Hey there, this is Dana Urquiri, author, speaker, and wellness advocate. Today I'd like to talk to you about parenting children who have ADD or ADHD and what I wish I would have known up front. So at this point, my kids are grown, my kids are adults, I am a seasoned ADD or mom who also has been diagnosed with ADHD. So I've gained some insight along the years of parenting and we'll start with one tip that you should pretty much just be encouraged by and that is there's no such thing as a perfect parent. So regardless of what your child's diagnosis is or whether there's multiple issues going on at this moment, including academic disabilities, understand that there's no such thing as a, per a perfect parent and that you are doing the best you can do. And so today I'd like to give some tips that I wish I had known this over 25 years ago. And so let's start with number one. I wish that I would have known over 25 years ago that my child is not dictated by his or her ADHD that they're not defined by this disability, that there's so much more to them, that they have their own personality, their own characteristics, they have their own gifts and strengths and talents, and it's just waiting underneath, waiting for me, the mom, to tap into it, to help them find what they're, what they're good at, find what they're talented in, their likes and their dislikes, and to help them blossom into a productive person in our society. Number two, I wish I had known that the foods and the beverages we give our children very much will significantly impact and influence our children's behaviors, their sleep, their schoolwork, their attitudes, and their overall ADHD symptoms. I wish I knew this, but um, my motto is live and learn. But what I wanted to mention is what I did learn through trial and error is that there are certain foods and ingredients that could actually hinder our children. And we're not even just talking kids who have a diagnosis of ADD or ADHD. We're talking all children that their diet and their nutrition is vital to their growth, to how they think, to their mind, to how they have insecurities about their own self, about how they're able to socialize with others. And for an example, I didn't know way back when that there was red dye number 40 that is contained in different sodas and candy and food I didn't know back then that red dye number 40 could cause hyperactivity. And it wasn't until I later on through the years discovered this and did some research and discovered for my own self that it really does impact a child and it could decrease their ability to focus. It could decrease their ability to feel good and be well. It could cause a lot of irritability. It could cause them to bounce off the walls and have extra hyperactivity. So understand that what you are feeding your kids. So for example, fast food, fake food, some of the food at the schools. Yes, we have to really take a good look and be an advocate for our kids and almost take every single item that they're eating and examine these ingredients because number one our kids may have a sensitivity to ingredients such as gluten which is wheat rye barley and oats our kids may have certain allergies that could really cause some problems academically socially and behavioral wise and we have to consider that there's so much more to our kids than just getting a diagnosis of ADHD. So start looking into your own children's diet, nutrition, what you're feeding them, and truly, truly, you are their mentor. They're watching you. Everything that you're eating, everything that you're doing, they're watching. They're going to model your behaviors. They're going to model what you eat. So this really is changing 
patterns that we may have grown up with ourselves. We may have been taught to eat and drink certain foods from when we were little kids. And so we have to rethink how we're going to give our children the best and highest quality and purest of nutrition. Number three is medicine. I wish I knew in the very early stages of my son's diagnosis um, that medicine's not the first option. Medicine's not the only option. That there's many different options to consider that even if there's pressure from a school district or pressure from a psychiatrist, counselor, therapist, psychologist, or what have you, there is pressure. I'm going to tell you right now, um, the school wants your child to sit still and be quiet, but that's really not their, their place. That's not their place. They're not the parent. We have to step up. We have to be the parent and we have to guard our children, protect our children. We have to advocate for our children, which means doing homework. And doing homework means understanding these medicines, the pharmaceuticals, Ritalin, Concerta, Vyvanse, Adderall, the list is long and there's so many more that are used today to treat children who have hyperactivity or any form of attention disorder. What I learned was trial and error. There's so much being shoved in our direction and we're being told by so many different people, professionals, family, neighbors, you name it, they all think they know it. They're all trying to tell us what to do, but we have to empower ourselves to step up to the plate, to gain more insight, to research. What are these drugs? What are the side effects? Do they have a black box warning? What does that mean? Could there be suicidal ideation? Could there be any kind of self-harm involved? Could there be any long-term damage or implications? And so that was something that really was a big piece of the pie as far as looking at the whole child and everything to do with how to treat, how to help, how to assist, how to improve my child's health. And that's something that you will face as a parent and you will need to make the best choices and, and understand that every child's different, every child responds different, that just because one child has a negative reaction to one particular drug doesn't mean they'll have a negative reaction to another stimulant or another medicine. And also know that there's pros and cons with both traditional medicine and natural holistic medicine. And so when you become a conscious consumer when you educate yourself and you gain knowledge and wisdom, it will give you the ability to become empowered and better equip yourself to help your own child. I know looking back, if I could do things over, I would not have done medicine. And I know a lot of parents may attack me on that, but hey, my kids are adults now and I see things in a whole new perspective. And based on the fact that I also was diagnosed in my 20s with ADHD and I've taken a whole long list of stimulant medications to address and treat ADHD. I see things in a different perspective because I've been there, I've done that. I'm not just a mom of an ADD or kid, I'm actually a patient too. I'm someone dealing with it also. And I think that actually helped me understand my kids. It actually helped me more so want to passionately do everything I could to protect my kids from doing any form of long-term damage medically to their bodies. And so this is something, again, that's a sensitive issue and only you as a parent can determine what's best for you. The next one I would say is to create consistent schedules. You know, nowadays I've seen a lot of parents, they don't have schedules. Their kids are up at long hours in the night their kids aren't sleeping well, their kids aren't eating well. Kids have gone wild, and it's not just ADHD kids. We're talking as a whole in our nation. The styles of parenting have changed, and while I'm not saying to get strict and whip your kids, and I'm not promoting that, what I am saying is when we have children who are diagnosed with ADHD, 
any kind of learning disability, any kind of other mental health diagnosis such as anxiety or depression, we must carve out a consistent schedule for their sleeping, for their eating, for playtime, school time, homework, for resting, for bathing, and it has to be consistent. So every day it's consistent. And once we do this, we will notice an improvement in their behavior because they get used to this routine and routines are good for those who are struggling with these forms of health challenges. Last would be, I can't say this any more clear than I am now, that nobody knows our children the way we do. Someone may tell you what they think you should do and doctors will, so don't be surprised, but you can say no. You have the option to decline what a psychologist or psychiatrist or a teacher or special education teacher is asking you to do. That if it doesn't resonate within you and you feel in your gut intuition or based on your research that it just does not sound like good advice or that right now you're not comfortable going in that direction, you need to stand up, speak the truth, be professional, but engage in a polite manner where you make it very clear that they're your children and you will do what you believe is best for your child and only you can advocate for your child you are the best person who could ever advocate for your child because they are your special gift they are a gift from god they are unique and wonderfully made and while they may be wired differently i hope that you can give them all of the love the care and the attention they need. And so today, if you have any questions about ADHD, parenting, kids, or you have any comments, or you'd like to share your own experiences, feel free, I'd love to hear from you. You may also connect with me on my website, danaarcuri.com. Feel free to like and subscribe and have a great day.